uh, yesterday, January 9th at 10 a.m., um, detectives from the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office uh, was able to arrest and take into custody Victor Lee Turner and Pamela Turner, also known as Megan Turner. Uh, they were taken into custody at their home, which is located in Cross Hill, South Carolina, which is in Lawrence <coughs> County. Lawrence County Sheriff's Office assisted us with the arrest. Uh, they have been transported back to the Berkeley County Jail. They are incarcerated at this time, and they are awaiting a bond hearing. The bond hearing is scheduled for 6.30 today, um, and uh, we'll, we don't know what the outcome of that will be as of yet. So to recap a little bit, um, this is a, a, an amazing day. It's a, a day that um, a lot of people that have since left us have been waiting for, and a lot of people that are here today. Um, 34 years ago, that's a long time. It's a long time. But if any of you remember, most of you do, Justin Turner was reported missing on March 3rd, 1989 at 3.12 p.m. from his home here in Berkeley County. Uh, deputies arrived, James Gether, first deputy on the scene, um, requested assistance and got help from other deputies and, and members of the rescue squad, uh, DNR, SLED, fire departments, uh, converged on the area searching for Justin. He's five years old at the time. Justin never made it to school that morning. He never got on the bus. He never arrived at school. That's because he had been murdered. And he'd been murdered by his stepmother and his father and left in a camper behind their house. I can't think of a more tragic, horrendous murder. Five-year-old boy. As we, as we looked at this case, and we've been working on this case for on and off for a year and a half straight, but on and off for many years, many sheriffs before me, um, but I keep going back to keep going back to Justin. Today, Justin would have been 40 years old. Could have graduated high school, went to college, got married, had a child, been a productive citizen. But he wasn't. Because we believe these two people took that away from all of us and this family who I have been in contact with over the years and they have been tremendous in their efforts to keep this case alive and keep pushing us and asking questions and, and helping us get where we are today. How did we get here? We got here because of some of the people in this room. Because of investigative work, the forensic work that SLED had done, the SLED agents, uh, all the folks involved from the sheriff's office, it, it, it's a lot of people that put, helped put this case together over the years. And, and I want to thank them. And I'm going to mention their names here shortly. But uh, so we know for a fact that Justin was strangled to death. There was lig ligature marks on his neck. We recovered what we believe to be uh, the uh, evidence of the murder. We have a lot of forensic evidence. Uh, we got here because new technology and forensic medicine. Y'all, we all know how th things have progressed over the years. And we kept pushing and plugging and pulling to finally get what we needed to make an arrest. Detectives have worked just 
I, I can't say enough about Detective Daryl Lewis and Detective John Plitch. They did an amazing job on this case. And uh, again, a lot of work went into a lot of people. I want to thank uh, Sled Agent Jim Barry, Sheriff L.C. Knights here. He was a sled agent also on the case. Uh, Lieutenant Randy Herod was uh, the, one of the investigative initial um, deputies. James Gathers is here. He was the first office deputy on the scene. Um, Mr. Green is here, and we're glad to see him. Thanks for all your efforts. Um, Lee Clayton was also on the scene. Um, L.G. Faircloth, who couldn't be with us. Um, Rita Schuler's here. I hope I'm not missing anybody. Um, Tim Braun, I want to thank him from the National Center for Missing and Explored Children, have also helped us. Captain Mike Prodan from SLED, uh, the Behavioral Science Unit, helped us tremendously, worked with our detectives a lot on this case. Um, so where, where do we go from here? So the case will be uh, presented at some point. And um, we'll move forward. I, I have to say I, I, I'm hoping and I'm praying that Justin is looking down from heaven rejoicing that today there's some justice. There's still some justice Amen. in this country. I can't thank y'all enough for being here. I'll entertain some questions, and then um, uh, a member of the family will also um, speak as well. So I'll entertain some questions. Yes? Sheriff, you said that uh, the reason why these arrests were ultimately made was due to forensic evidence. Can you provide us any additional detail on, on what specifically tied uh, these two individuals to Justin's death? Yes, a, a good point. I'm going to send out the affidavits that, that outlines everything for you. Everything's in there. Uh, but, but essentially, a, a, a few things. I mean, we were able to uh, narrow down the time of death um, with uh, the contents from Justin's stomach that morning. Um, statements that were made during the initial uh, interview initial on-scene investigation, all of those things. But we were able to, to use uh, some forensic testing that we had not had available to us before. And that enabled us to tie in the murder weapon that we believe was used to strangle Justin to uh, clothing and, and, and fabric on his clothing at the time of his death. Um, there's a lot of other things that account for it, but that's just a couple of things. Who's next? And when you say um, new technology, can you kind of go like elaborate a little bit about what exactly is that in here? Well, you know, um, and I, I don't, the, my sled lab people aren't here that I can see, but you know, technology's evolving, and, and in, our, in our field, um, things change to where. You can't, in the past, you may not be able to put two things together um, that you had as evidence. And there's, there's other ways. I'm not a technical forensic person, but I do understand how they got to where we are. Um, but I'll, I'll get you an answer to that question from someone that's technical. Yeah. Have you interviewed them uh, on this arrest? Are they uh, admitting what they've done? Uh, what, uh, have, what, what, is, what are they saying to detectives? Uh, nothing. Uh, we gave them an opportunity to talk to us, and they uh, had ample time to talk to us in the car on the way from Cross Hill, South Carolina, about three, three hour, three and a half hour drive. Um, nope, they hadn't talked to us. So did, was that what you guys were doing during that ride? Were you, were you continuously trying to, um, to question them? 
Well, we, we read them their rights initially uh, when they are arrested, and we, we give anybody a chance to talk to, especially on a long car ride. Uh, we're hoping that'll generate some talk, but um, they, they did decided not to talk to us. This is a huge deal in Berkeley County. This particular case has been something that people have heard about and talked about for many decades. How important has it been for you to try to get this solved? Well, it, 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 it's always been a very important to me. I was, you know, I lived here. Um, I was working with another police agency when it happened. Um, but I've always known it. I've felt it. And uh, how many people it, it, it affected. Um, when so, you have to go back to, to 1989 and think about Berkeley County. We were a different place. We were, we were smaller. Everybody kind of knew everybody. Um, and, and families were all, we all stuck together and, and had acquaintances and things, people that we knew. And it just went widespread all over, not just Berkeley, but the state and, and the country. And um, everybody wanted some justice. And, and I think, you know, if you look back at some of your old footage, you'll see that it affected a lot of people and it stayed with me. And when I was elected, um, not sh not soon after, Amy called me and said, "Hey, I want to come talk to you." And we sat down and we talked, and and um, we we put people on the case, and uh, we finally got to where we needed to be. And uh, again, those people that are live in Berkeley County now that are not from here, that wasn't here in 1989 or even 1990. You have no idea the, the impact that this case had on the people, the deputies, the coroner's office, everybody, sled agents, everybody that was involved in this case. It had a tremendous impact. I talked to one of the sled agents yesterday. She couldn't be here. This was her first case, and it still affects her today. Think about it. That was her first case. And it tremendously impacted her. We talked about the impact of your sled officers and your deputies. Are there any deputies still with you who is on the case? And if there are, what does it mean to them? Or what have they said to you to finally be able to put these people in jail? Well, uh, you know, I've talked to everybody that's still around, and and, and I'm so sorry that. Justin's real mother is not here because she suffered tremendously and um, so have a lot of people I mean there's some deputies that that were here that, that went to the scene um, everybody kind of felt it it was it was a tragedy and um, I'm just hoping that we can move forward and 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 that we have done the very best that we can to our ability to, to solve this case and, and help this family. And really, 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 at the end of the day, give Justin some justice. Man, how about that? 34 years, that's a long time. Yeah, um, and, 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 you know, initially they provided information um, that, you know, he didn't get on the, he, that he got on the school bus and went to school but never got off of the bus. That was not true. He never got on that bus. He never got on that bus because he was dead inside that house. So there's been a lot of different things and statements made um, when you when you look at the scene, you can you can assume by looking at it that it was somewhat a staged scene, scene to make it look like something that it wasn't, and um, all that'll come out. We'll we'll get to all that, but there's a lot of inconsistencies in the story, in the information, in what the deputies, detectives, the sled agents. DNR agents were told 
when they first got there to try to piece the thing together. Do you believe he was killed inside the house and then taken to camp? We think so. We think so, yes. You have your hand up, ma'am? Yeah. So um, I know Sheriff MC Cannon, his his team worked very hard on it. Um, Sheriff Isgit uh, also had, you know, and I'm going through the sheriffs um, as I knew them. Um, I think at one point even Scotland Yard was involved in this case, and and had had examined it. Um, when uh, Sheriff Dewitt came in. Um, I think John worked on it some then while um, Sheriff DeWitt was here. And again, it's been renewed and, and, and people were, we've always been doing what we, the very best we could do based on the evidence and the technology and the forensics that we had. Um, so it's just thank the good Lord we got to a place where we were able to get enough to, to uh, make an arrest. Can you clarify a little bit when um, the two suspects went from providing information to you to being the two suspects that your agency was kind of focusing on leading up to yesterday's arrest? Yeah, so um, if you look at the overall, they, uh, Pamela was arrested at one point and charged. Case was dismissed um, without prejudice, so it would enable us to come back again if, if, if we had enough evidence. Um, she changed her name, they moved to the upstate, and nobody um, that I'm aware of from any of the family has ever heard from them again. Isn't that strange? I never got one phone call. One phone call from his daddy or his stepmother. What are y'all doing about my son's death? Not one. What does that tell you? So Pamela was arrested twice. And Victor, this is the first time that he's been arrested. Yeah. And do they have an attorney at this time? I don't know. Okay. Do you know which one was responsible for the actual <coughs> killing and which one? <coughs> hand of one, a hand all. When you look, read the affidavit, you'll see. Yeah, I don't want to get that specific right now. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I know you've mentioned that technology was used in your initial yeah, good question. Um, you know, we're always looking at new ways of solving problems and cases. Um, as I said, time marches on, things change, and things get better. Um, you know, um, we, we, this team, um, really painstakingly looks at every unsolved um murder that we have and and apply what we've applied in this case to try to move those cases forward and um, and we've been successful so um, I'm gonna let Amy just say your name and come up and say anything you want to say I'm Amy Parsons I am Justin's cousin of course, I was only eight at the time of his murder. Um, I want to thank God first for getting us to this point, and Sheriff Lewis for listening to our cries. From here, all we want is justice, and I want to see our justice system do what it was intended to do and put these two people where they deserve to be because they've walked for 34 years They've had freedom for 34 years while our family has suffered and they don't deserve another day from behind those bars. And I'm gonna thank everybody that has put time in to get us to where we are here. And once again, Sheriff Lewis, I really truly, we all appreciate what you have done for our family. Thank you. Okay, thank y'all. <laughs>